That was on? I bet we don't miss a Monday. Yes, Finally sir. Finally back. We're here to give you guys the gems. Hopefully shed some light on topics that you need to hear on this Monday morning, Tuesday morning, or even afternoons now that we've been posting. Yeah. We switched it, huh? Switched it to yeah, 6 p.m. No, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. But it's also like podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast out here, baby. Mm. I'm your host, Dusko. Yeah, I already know it's your boy, Dylan. And today, coming from Portland, man, highly motivated. Yes, sir. You've seen him go viral on many, many videos, not just him speaking the truth and saying saying things the way they should be and the way they they should people should hear it, but also they seen a viral video of your son. And, man, it's an honor, it's a blessing to have Mr. Miguel Mendoza in the house, baby. <laughs> A.K.A. Leave Your Mark. That's right. A.K.A. Yes, Leave sir. Your Mark on IG. So if, if you don't know who we're talking about, stop stop the video, go on IG. You're going to, oh, shit, I, I've seen him. But, man, how you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing, I'm doing great, bro. Well, first of all, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. It's it's nah, an man. honor to be here. All right, I, I love this podcast, man. I, y'all popped up on my explore page. Uh, I saw an episode on YouTube. This is the perfect kind of podcast for me because y'all talk about the stuff we need to hear while also making me laugh, man. It's just that that humanity aspect as well. So y'all are crushing it, man. I love it. Nah, Thank man. You. Thank you. And again, these are these are relationships and things that you know when we started. Started this three years ago. The team came about about a year and a half ago. Like, we always dreamed and imagined, like, yo, we're going to be to the point where we're making relationships and friendships with people outside of our circle, outside of our area. Yep. And it's not like you live here in Cali. <laughs> so for the, right. people, for the people that don't know, where were you born? Where were you raised? So to kind of give us that background. Uh, yeah. For not just our viewers, but yours also. Right. So I'm born and bred from the state of Washington. State of Washington, shout out. I was born near Seattle area in a little town called Mount Vernon, but that was funny enough just for a business trip. But I was raised in the east side of Washington Mm -hmm. called Tri-Cities, Washington. It consists of Pasco, Kennewick, Richland. Shout out to the hometown. And then uh, went off and and did my college football stuff, but then came back uh, to the Northwest because I found out I was going to be a dad. And so uh, my son's mom lives and she's from Portland area. So if I want to be a part of my kid's life, I had to relocate, pick up everything, and, and move my new life to Portland. So I've been there about seven years now, and, and I love it, man. Man. Did, you've had a – was was your childhood, like, growing up, like, in Washington, like, was it lonely? Was it tough? Was it like, harsh? Like, kind of give us that background, too. You said it was a small town, no? Uh, it's smaller. It was definitely way smaller when I was a kid. It, it's fast-growing right now. Everybody but Everybody knows everybody? Yeah, just about. Like, you can't – it's one of those where – you can't go to Walmart without, like, seeing somebody you know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And uh, But you, you named them all, man. It was, it was, a, it was a tough upbringing. Um, my parents, they divorced when I was six. Mm. Um, up until, I mean, that's really when my memories kicked in. But uh, ever since then, you know, they, they, they were young. So the first thing I want to say about my parents is I love them, and they did the best that they could with what they knew and, and how they were raised and what they were taught you know, how to raise kids or, or how to love people. And so um, they, they crushed it. I mean, my dad, he never missed a day of work, regardless of the battles that he went through, the internal battles, the stuff that he fought, never missed a day of work. Um, and my mom, same thing. She, she worked two jobs at one point after the divorce. And I mostly live with my mom. So I was mostly raised by my mom, but, um, you know, would see my dad, you know, frequently throughout my life. And, um, but, you know, the, the, the tough times came really when it came down to my mom working two jobs and then who I was around while she was working, right? Mm-hmm. Like I had people, family members that would take care of me, but they just ha- so happened to be gangbangers, drug dealers, drug addicts, um, abusers. And so, um, so that, that was tough, man. But, um, and then, but, you know, my mom called me a few years ago and she, she was apologizing just for all this stuff. Like I could have done a better job, but I was like, you know what? Like if it, it, everything happened the way it was supposed to happen, you know, like if I would have had the white picket fence life, I wouldn't be who I am today. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the father that I am to my son today because I'm, I'm the father I am to my son because of my past experiences, right? You either, 
you either look at your past and you learn from it or you kind of carry on that chain. And so I, I learned from it. I'm like, okay, what worked, what didn't work? And so I told my mom, like, I mean, y'all raised a dog. Like, like you guys, you guys raised someone who um, has vision and, and a, a purpose for their life and who wants to help change the world. And so, so t- I mean, technically, y'all crushed it, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, man, so that's kind of how childhood was. It was rough. It was very lonely. Um, you know, I'm very interactive with my son. I play with my son a lot, man, and, um, because I didn't have that. You know, I, I, didn't, I can't remember at one time, like an adult, like sitting down playing toys with me. Right. And um, one of the clips that went viral with my son, I asked, he said that I'm a great dad. And I'm like, what makes me a great dad? And he was like, because you play with me. Right. He didn't say because you provide for me. He didn't say because you feed me, you give me my favorite snacks. He didn't say none of that. He said, because you play with me. And so, I mean, that right there and, and that the comment section has helped out so many people. Well, actually, that's how I can see it's helped out so many people mm-hmm. because it's like, man, I got to play with my kids. It's right. A, and, and it's. You're bringing up the comment section. So in, in something, in what we do, right, comments is a big thing. There's people that are going to relate to it, love the message, love, love, love what they're hearing and relate to it, either past trauma, childhood, may, maybe them being parents and them doing the same thing. Um, but then you also get those people that, you know, don't agree with it. That, oh, this is fake. Oh, this is, oh, you scripted. Scripted yeah, or something. Scripted. Yeah, scripted. This right. is... Oh, like, what is this? Like, that, that's, you know, the negativity. Right. And it's something that we learned in along the way, too, with Dylan is sometimes, like, people that are making those negative comments, they just want to be, re- like, someone, they just want their name to be read, like, have an opinion. But it could also be that they're coming from past trauma mm. that they never healed because they've never got the the environment to actually speak on it or to really grow from it. That's right. Because like being, being dad is like, you know, I, I love what, what you said, like your parents did the best they could, even though it was probably not as in the best situations and environments. Right. But because of that, you're now this, this dad to your kid. That's right. So everybody's seen that video, man, with you and your son <laughs> for you. Like what's, what's that like feeling though? Like hearing your son say those things and you're being on the other side of the table and kind of like watching them like, wow. Right. Yeah, man. So, uh, well, definitely it, it took me for surprise, not for why you may think, because me and my son, we have intellectual conversations. Like we, like we're very transparent, you know what I'm saying? Because again, like y- y'all know the, the Latino tradition, man, it's the, the tough dad, you know, we come home at the end of the day, and I'm just going to chill and, and do your thing, whatever. Um, and there's not real that deep, deep connection, right? And it's no one's fault. It's just the culture, yeah. right? And so I, I wanted to break that barrier because one of, the, one of the scariest and kind of worst parts of my childhood, aside from all the, like, external damage, was the fact that I didn't have anybody to go to to talk about anything, right? Like, if I was really going through something, I had no one to go to because I felt like I was either going to get in trouble or told to just, like, be quiet, like, whatever, or, you know, something like that. And yeah, so... Shut up, bro. Like, just... Met, met that dormir or go... Go do something productive. Get That's your right. mind off of stuff, Like too. we said before yes. on this podcast, like, you're never truly alone because you can always reach out to people, yeah. but they're never going to really understand you or, or it's just the fact that to reach out to them, you're like, damn, I don't know if I should really do it. That's right. Because it's yeah. like... Can, like, we agree to something or... <clears throat> Now, like, just, I have these moments where, like, we're going through a conversation, I'm like, hold on. Right. Thought about something. So, for people that don't think I think, I think, fool. Oh, <laughs> just, just, for once. For once. Hey, whoa. <laughs> um, but when, how you just said, like, we've always had someone to talk to. Mm-hmm. But even, I can remember even in high school, I don't really, I remember having good friends, but I don't remember having the safe environment to speak on, you know, what, depression was anxiety lonely you know having those moments like I don't I don't even remember having that type of conversation with anybody because it was always like the next day seven in the morning go to school put up a smile go with your boyfriend girlfriend like keep going like right no matter what sports was a bit was a big factor in everything too but even like in the song with deep deep uh reverence by by Nipsey Hussle and, and um Big Sean like in high school, like, we were never taught, we were taught biology and psychology, but we were never taught how to deal with anxiety. Mm-hmm. Like, that's one thing right now that's like, yo, like, 
I, I coach high school, so it's like, yo, let's, let's talk about this. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about what you're going through. Let's, like, what's the root of everything? Right. But then you have the, those dogs that are dogs in the field that are playing for something much bigger yep. than just to be able to wear that jersey. That's right. They're wearing that jersey, but it's representing not only their school, but their family. Yep. Their mom, their dad, their grandpa, their grandma, their little brother, little sister. And I know he was a dog in, in playing sports. Mm. I was a dog in playing sports. You were big time in sports, made it to college ball. But in high school, like, what can you remember? If you take us back through that, too, what can you remember of did you ever know how to deal with anxiety, depression during those times? Or did you always just were always on the go because of sports? Man, um, absolutely. I was a wreck. I was a wreck, and, and it was because of the lack of father figure in my life, you know, and I mean, and I'll definitely answer your question, but I mean, just so people know, if you look at the statistics of the people who are raised without fathers in the picture, the, the people who commit crimes, most of them, over, well over 50%, come from fatherless homes, and so... This is, this is why, because I believe you're, you're trying to raise, especially young boys, you're trying to raise somebody who's growing and maturing and getting this testosterone. You're trying to raise them in a feminine way, right? So that was me. Essentially, is you're trying to raise a bull in a china shop, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of raising a bull in a damn farm, right? And so for me, man, I was so like emotional, but I didn't know how to deal with these emotions, you know what I'm saying? And, and all this anxiety and, and everything like that. And, and there was definitely some, like the lowest point uh, in high school was, um, well, I, I had gone through so much, like being a transfer ineligible, um, like sophomore year, I made varsity and I was going to take off and, and do all this stuff, but like transfer ineligible. And even the next year, um, like I transferred too late, so I couldn't play senior year was going to be my year. I was, we were, we were scrimmaging other teams and I was killing them. And then I tear my shoulder right before, uh, uh summer ball ends Which and a running back. Running back, yeah, man, I was, I was, I was shifty, and and so it. Uh, I mean, he's not the biggest dude out here. Bro. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> rugby, rugby, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, we're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to make a rugby league right now. For the, like the last like, what is it like two months? He's like, hey, fool, let's do a rugby team. Let's do a rugby. I'm like, nah, fool. That's rugby. the only way I can let some anger out without actually the legal way, you know? Right, right. <laughs> no, rugby's fun, dude. Rug, rugby's fun, but um, yeah. So when I tore my shoulder, um. That was it. I was out for senior year. And at the time, I did not know anything about JUCOs. I knew nothing about, like, I just thought, okay, I'm not getting a college scholarship. All my recruiting is out the window, so it's over. And essentially, that was my life. So yeah. I thought my life was over. You know what I'm saying? And, and so it was, I was just in such a deep, dark phase of my life. And that's when I just really went into a huge, you know, party drinking phase. Like, it, and it was, we were hitting into summer, so it was like every night. Every night I was drinking. And um, there was a person that was not a part of my family, but close to the family at the time. Um, this person was like into weightlifting and he offered me steroids. And he offered me it before in the past. And I'm like, nah, dude, I'm, I'm going to college. I'm set. Like, I ain't got to do all that. But then he told me, he's like, steroids are going to uh, repair the ligaments that you tore. And at that, I was so low at that point. I was just like the only option out there. You know? Let's do it. I mean, if this is if this is all I can do, then then let's do it. And yeah. he was right. It, it definitely healed my shoulder, but he gave me way too much. He he gave me too much. And I mean, I already had a young what was it like seventeen at the time, seventeen year old brain still developing, and now you're mixing all that chemicals in it. And uh, later find out this guy was a heroin addict. So, so he didn't know, so he didn't, he didn't, he didn't give me heroin or nothing like that, but he didn't know what the hell say. he was doing, man. That's what I said. You sure there were steroids? <laughs> Imagine like, I wonder why I'm not working out today. Shit, I wonder why I can lift this car today, uh, man. This <laughs> goes, uh, this goes, days. I'm going to bring back just a little that yeah. you said, um, you know, uh, growing up without a father, mm -hmm. you can say, and being around people, like you said, heroin addicts, being around bad people, you know, um, a lot of people judge you based on who you hang out with. Right. And my question is, how did you not fall into that? Yeah, man. Well, um, obviously, you're, you're, you know, you're influenced by people like that at a young age. Right. Um, how did you not get yourself into that? Or how did you get yourself out of it? That's a great point, because really, we're, we're influenced at all ages, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's why, you know, there's the quote, birds of a feather flock together. 
because it doesn't matter how old you are, but you're right, especially when you're young, you're so easily influenced. And so you, you fall into the, the, the things of what your friends are doing and all that. But for me, what saved me was vision, right? Having a, having a vision for my life. And whether it was playing football or, or wanting to be a speaker, like I always had a vision for my life. And um, I was going to do anything to, to make it happen. And so what I want people to understand about vision is not just like, oh, I have a cool idea. I love it. Yeah. I'm passionate. That's, that's not vision. You're, you're, you may be on your way, but vision is you're literally – seeing something that's not there, right? I'm not talking about eyesight, right? Mm -hmm. Eyesight is, is you, you judge life based off of what you see, but mindsight, which is what I'm talking about, vision is judging life based off of what could happen, right? What you, what you want to happen. And you being so delusional that you actually see this life, right? Regardless if you're driving a beat up Honda Civic, you see the life you want, you see yourself driving the Rolls Royce or the, the Lambo, whatever it is, like you have that vision. And I love Nipsey. Nipsey talks about vision a lot in his music. And, um, but really all very successful people understand it all starts with vision. And because vision is what's going to get you through the rough childhoods or the influences around you. And so, you know, even though I was super low in that point of, and then he, so he gave me too much steroids and um, too much to where I couldn't even work out. I was throwing up like even just in warm ups, even just warming up to work out, I was throwing up. He gave me way too much. So it's funny because he healed me in time to play, but my body was destroyed. And um, now because of that, then it was really over. I went off drinking again. So you mix alcohol oh, with the chemical imbalance you've done in your brain with the steroids. I tried to kill myself. All I had was a hammer. So I tried to beat my head in with a hammer. Um, luckily, I didn't swing hard enough. I ended up in the hospital, but I was fine. And um, that's when I learned about junior college. And uh, there was a player for the Seattle Seahawks, the, the hometown team. Uh, his name was Bruce Irvin. I just followed his story. And he uh, was a troublemaker in high school, dropped out, got his GED, went to a junior college here in California, and balled out, I think, one year, maybe two years, but got a full scholarship to West Virginia University, was there one year, and was a first-round draft pick in the NFL. And so he let me know that it was possible. That's all I needed to know. All I needed to know was that it was possible, right? That's the thing. Fine. You can, man, you have a vision. Like I said, you're in vision, like, yeah, one day I want to have that car. I want to have that house. I want to be in these places, these cities. And growing up, man, again, being around our environment, sometimes we don't get that, that vision because it's not attainable. They don't, they don't give us, like, hey, mijo, like, if you dream big, you want this, you can go ahead and get it. But it's like, mijo, if you dream big, you can, you can take care of the family. Mm -hmm. You can have the house, whatever the case is. But, like, our dreams stop there. But once we see, once we get out of that environment, that safe environment, we go to the unknown, man, he did it. Why the fuck can I do it? Right. And it takes, it's, it's a choice. You That's get right. A, you get a chance every day and you get a choice every day. It's what you do with those choices that, you know, you'll, you'll make it your tomorrow either better or worse. You hit it. Yep. There's, there's a part that, that reading, reading about you is you got sick. Mm-hmm. And you went to Mexico. I went to Mexico, yeah. And you got cured. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Yeah. So, man, uh, again, this is, this is the part of, you know. Because this is, this is all part of your story. Right, right. You, everybody's seen you right now. Right. Your viral videos, your, your viral advice, your, your speeches, your comments, your, the way you, you tell people th this message. But not a lot of people are, are seeing what the pieces to the puzzle that were meant to be put for them to see you who you are now this right smiley highly motivated um highly <sighs> driven bro like there's a lot of trials and tribulations that you're going through and we're going through it right now but getting sick was one of those things like here doctor said you're pretty much fucked yep and you said no <laughs> yeah man so you're right man it's uh a lot of people see everything that, that's going on now, yeah. and, uh, I, you know, we got to love the comment section, man, because a lot of them say, <laughs> okay, you're giving this advice, but what the hell have you been through, right? Yeah. And, and I'm just, I'm, and I love it, because it's just like, man, if only you knew, but it's okay. Your time will come. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, when I was 13, I was diagnosed with a disease called ulcerative colitis, and it's a pretty rough um, disease in your intestines, and uh, don't really know where it comes from. Um, some people say it could be like nutrition, but like 
there was people eating way worse than me and, and they were fine. So we don't, we didn't really know where it came from, but, um, you know, it's interesting because this was a time in my life where I was really taking football serious, where I was like, okay, I want to go as far as football will allow me to go. Right. And I feel like when you make that decision to, first of all, when you have a vision and you actually take the first step and you have desire for it, life's going to see how bad you want it. Right. And so, um, I was diagnosed with this random illness. Right. And I'll never forget, man, I was in the I was in the doctor's office and he came out and told me, he's like, yeah, man, you, you have this illness. Uh, there's no cure for it and you're going to have it for the rest of your life. We could do surgery to give you fake intestines and, uh, it could turn into colon cancer and that's a wrap. And so, um, you know, I was like, wow. And so over the next year, so this was the, uh, towards the end of my eighth grade year in middle school, going into my freshman year of high school, um, I was just getting worse and worse, man. I was just getting real skinny, real pale. Um, I was losing a lot of blood out of my body. And it, uh, the, the worst part was the pain. Like there was just this real horrible pain in your stomach. And it got to a point where it was every five minutes of my life. And so uh, going into my freshman year, it got to a point pretty fast where I was pretty much just bedridden. I wasn't going to school. I was just suffering, man. And um, taking like up to 22 pills a day. And we just, we didn't know what to do, man. And, and that's where, you know, I, my heart goes out to my parents because I cannot imagine if my son went through something like this, bro. Like even him just having a flu, like, I'm just like, bro, give, give me the flu, God, let get, give me the flu. I'll, I'll take the flu. Let him chill. Let him, let him be a happy kid. But, um, so it turns out my mom had a coworker who heard about these doctors in Mexico. They have a small clinic and, uh, turns out they could, cure this thing, you know, so, so they say, and, um, all through the power of the, the universe, man, the higher power, they were actually in my hometown giving a conference explaining what they do. Right. And so me and my mom went to that conference and, and they explained everything. And at, towards the end of it, we were like, let's go. Not because we really believed it was going to work, but it was like, man, what else are we going to do? Yeah. Right. Like I'm You're back against the wall, man. I'm getting worse. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if I was going to even see senior year, man. It was, it was tough. And so um, we went out there, uh, by that time I was 14 years old and, uh, it was all natural therapies. Um, they would only give you organic food that they grew or that they got from the local market there in Mexico. It was, the city was Outland de Navarro in Jalisco in, in, in Mexico for those who want to know. But, um, it was a small clinic. It's so amazing in Mexico. They don't have the technology we do, but man, they really utilize what they have, right? Like they took a picture of my eye and somehow figured out where in my body I was inflamed. Oh, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Yep. Crazy. It's the grandmas, the grandmas, bro. Bro, it's, it's, it's the grandmas. What, what, what is it? Like, even when, like, when <laughs> the girls are pregnant, they get the needle, and they swing it back and forth, and that's a girl. That's, that's how the fuck boy. do you I'm know? Like, what? I mean, that's that's pretty much what it is. And, uh, but then they got me on the, on the treatment, so it was like an all-day thing. They would use ice water they would use hot water they would use steam um they like would whack me with thorns all over my body just to get the blood rushing everywhere because it was kind of stuck where i was inflamed and um they cleaned me from the inside out I'll, I'll leave it at there just in case anybody's eating that's watching from home right now but uh it was rough man it, it was it was rough and and towards the middle of that man i was just willing to call it quits i'm like let's just go home and accept my fate and um but at the time, my mom was reading this book called The Success Principles by Jack Canfield, and she would kind of spit out some nuggets that she was reading. And I'm like, man, what the heck? Is, I've never heard anything like this before. Do you before. remember one of them? Um, I, don't, I don't. But it was, it was just like, it's, it's self-help 101. It was stuff like actually setting a goal, writing them down, the importance of writing down your goals, the importance of believing in things like vision, right? And making a vision board and all these things. And I'm like, what the heck? And so I started reading the book on my own. And then I started watching motivational speakers on YouTube. The first one was Les Brown. He's still my favorite to this day. And man, when I say they saved my life, like they saved my life because it took me to a different place mentally. And at that point, so my dream was to play football. But at that point, the real vision for my life came, which was like, man, I want to be speaking to kids in a hospital bed saying that their life is over, that their dreams are over. I want to be speaking to people that are in juvie and jail and prison who think that their life is over. Like I want to speak, speak into schools, people who, who are bullied or, or at least are told by their society, their culture, that this is all your life is going to turn out to. And so that's, that's when the real vision for my life came. And I, I still knew I needed to play football. I needed to go as far as I could. I needed to have success to have the credibility to speak. You, you always need 
some sort of you need a not a backup, but you you need that track record. You were successful in this, and you always been this person there, leading the team, leading by example. Right. That when you transition to this next part of your life, this next chapter. It's an easier transition because you're like, yo, I've already been doing this. I've already been motivated. I've already been driven. I've already, I've already faced death. I've already, my back against the wall. What else? What else can you throw at me? This is where I'm going. Exactly. And no matter what anybody says, I'm going there mm -hmm. on my terms. So it's like that, finding, finding your gift. It's like uh, Steve, I'm a big fan of Steve Harvey. He yep. says, do that thing that keeps you up at night. Yep. If you if you think about a certain a certain uh, vision, a certain thing that you want to be doing with your life, hey, like, what's the worst that could happen if you try it out? Yep. You fail. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. Try it again. Oh, you fail once. Okay, try it again. Mm -hmm. Just do it. You know, start taking those little notes. Oh, I tried this. It didn't work. I tried this. It didn't work. Yo, but again, like, I think the, the youth is a big thing. Telling our our fourteen to eighteen year old. High school kids, like, yo, you can be bigger than this. Right. You don't got to stay here. You don't have to be what everybody wants. If you don't want to go to school, okay, what's the option? What are your options? What do you like to do? Mm -hmm. Figure it out. Like, I, I've been blessed to be able to coach uh, some, of, some of my girl high, my high school girl soccer team, and one of them has, like, she does a little shop in Long Beach. In Long Beach. So when there's, like, a little, like, um, those night markets on the weekends, mm -hmm. she goes and sells jewelry. Wow. And she's like, it was crazy because we're, we're finishing practice one night. And she's like, let's go like, you know, how, how does business work? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you, what what are you, you talking what about? <laughs> she's like, yeah, like I have this, this, this. I'm like, yo, like, keep going. Like, right now it's, you know, you make a couple little bucks. You like it. You love it. But keep it going. Yep. Like, it's like, obviously, Instagram. I was like, do your free promos, man. Instagram, TikTok. Let people know who, right. who you are, and if for the, if anybody makes fun of it, if anybody downplays it, hey, ignore that noise. Yep, that's you keep that's going. the thing. I feel like that's very important because uh, kids that age, I didn't, I personally didn't go through this because my parents always, you know, gave me attention, you know, listened and everything. Um, but kids that age, they have either they don't have someone at home they can talk to, or they have someone at home that just listens but doesn't understand. And that's very important because yep. we've we've coached girls before, and like you said right now, the girl came to you. Why did why didn't the girl go and ask her dad yep. about it? You know, because it's like either her dad doesn't know about it, or her dad doesn't pay enough attention, or doesn't understand, or doesn't listen. So when we used to coach, a lot of the girls would come and tell their problems to us, like if it was therapy. Yeah. And it's like not a lot of kids at home have you know parents that understand them and listen to them and everything. So. Mm. I love that 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 thing that you're like. You know what? I want to go talk to schools. I want to go talk to because right. not a lot of people do that. Not a lot of people do that. So, a lot of people that they get kind of confused in this, right? When people say follow your dreams, you know, do everything possible to follow your dreams, they don't understand that following your dreams takes a lot of work, comes with a lot of sacrifice. Your payback doesn't come back right away. Mm -hmm. But one thing I have been preaching big about, and again, hearing it from other big speakers, it's like your dream, your passion will pave the way for you. Give, you could, can you say giving up football, in a sense? Um, it, I mean, it, it got to a, it got or to a point. It was a, I mean, it got to a point where it, it came to an end. Col so, college was was where because I I didn't even play much in college because I was changing my kid's diaper. Like it, it was mm. just being in college was to me. Yeah amazing in itself and everything else was whatever. how do you how do you monetize how do you follow your 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 calling so from playing football you started your leave your mark business which was a training training a uh, training football players right all athletes yeah, all yeah. athletes how do you transition into now doing what you've always meant to be doing. Man, yeah, that's a great question. And it was it was so smooth, man, because honestly, the reason why I was so successful in starting a business being a sports performance coach was because I was really just a speaker disguised as a trainer. Because that's what made me stand out to these parents, especially. These parents loved uh, bringing their kids to me because it's like he's going to give you that mental coaching as well. 
right? There it is. And uh, I came across uh, two trainers when I was in high school. They're, they played football in Louisiana. Like, they're dogs. And I, I, I barely found them, like, late in my junior year of high school. But they, they worked me to my limits, man. I never knew you could push the human body that, that hard. But they would also get in your mental. Like, they would, they would, like they would literally piss you off to a point where it's like, man, you're going to give up? Like, think about all the people that believe in you. Think mm -hmm. about the people who, who put you here. Think about the people who have, have raised you up to this point. Those who actually want to see you succeed. You're not thinking about them when you're, you're giving up and thinking about yourself. Oh, I'm tired, right? Making all these excuses. So they, they got me right. Oh, man. They got me right. And so really, I just, I took that over to what I, I mean, they, they built that in me. It's, it, it's who I became. And You've always been this person and just now you're, you're leveled light. up. Yeah. It's shining on you. Man. Yep. Yep. It, it's how you said you've all, you just been disguised as a football player, but you've always been an impactful person. That's right. Yeah. You can, we could say motivational speaker and, and it's, it's a good title, but you've always been impactful and you've right. always stayed true to yourself. Yeah. But the part that you said right now, like giving up, look at everybody that has, has ever helped you in your journey, whether they, gave you a couple of dollars to eat something, whether they gave you a ride, whether they, they supported you on days that you didn't even want to support yourself. Like, mm -hmm. what about all those people that ever just believed in you at least one time? Right. What are you doing? Why are you giving up now? Because it got a little hard. Yep. It's like how, you, how we said earlier, God will test you. You want the fame, you want the glitz, the glory, and God is going to test you. Mm -hmm. How bad do you want it? Right. Because if you get it easy, you're going to lose it just as easy. Yep. And if you lose it and you and you don't care about it, then you just never really wanted it. Mm -hmm. Like this, if you take try to if you try to take this away from us, you better ready to be going to war with me yep. because I'm gonna put up a fight. That's right. And I'm and no matter what happens, I know I'm gonna stay true to myself. If it doesn't work out, then I know it wasn't meant to be. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that I put everything into this. So the day we leave this. I just know what, there was no stone unturned. That's right. That that's where I was at peace with football football coming to an end because it's like man, I I ran this thing until until the wheels fell off, you yeah. know. And and uh, you know something else you mentioned was um, that that you kind of piggybacked off me was about thinking about the people who believe in you, right? Yeah. But another thing that we don't think about is all the people that we're going to impact that we'll never meet. Right. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I, I always that. saw that was because I was in that situation when I was sick in Mexico. These people I have never met, Les mm -hmm. Brown, Jack Canfield, Eric Thomas, yeah. um, Bruce Irvin later on the, the, with his story of going to Juco and, and yeah. going to the NFL. I've never met them. I, I hope I can meet them all one day, but I've never met them yet. They changed my life. Mm -hmm. So it's so easy to think about ourselves. It's so easy when, when we want to give up, when we're tired of studying, when, you know, we, we feel like we pushed our bodies to the limits. It's so easy to think about us and be selfish, but we don't understand how many lives that we can change. Like if, if we just understood that, that look, man, what I do today can help a child in New Hampshire 10 years from now. I think that we would we would do a lot of things differently, right? Sure. It's just it's just perspective, man. That's it. And um, but definitely with the people who have actually stuck their necks out for you and yeah. who do believe in you, the, the parents that have paid for your school or your or your coach or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And, so and even if they're if those people that want supporting you are not even in your life, mm -hmm. like hey, you, if we go through life and not everybody stays with us and around us. Like everybody has to go through their own journey. But again, like when you live, perp you, when you live your life purposeful, like everything's gonna come at you—the good, the bad, the happy moments, the sad moments, the lonely moments. Right. And that those are the moments that a lot of people don't see. We've had these conversations daily where it's like, "Yo, like, all right, dog, like, why are you feeling this way? All right, what is your goal? What do you want to go to? Like, again, I'm highly motivated because how you said earlier, like, you went to Mexico and your your hands are already up. That's it. Like. Whether it may not work, and I'm okay with it. And that's the thing. Like, when your back's against the wall, there's only, one, there's only two options. Fight and go forward or put your hands up and just quit. Right. And be depressed. You know, have those suicidal thoughts. Then that's when they come, right? When you're lonely, when nothing's going right, you have those, you have those bad thoughts. But it's like, yo, think about... If you put a little bit more effort, where can you end up in? Yeah. Steve, Steve Harvey, he, he mentions the turn back moment, 
where mm. we, we always yeah. get to a point, yeah. if, if you're really following your, your dreams, your passions, your vision, your goals, you're always going to get to that point, wherever it is, where you are tempted to turn back, where you have the option to turn back or keep going. When it seems like keep going seems dangerous, like you're always going to have that. But, you know, who's willing to keep going? And, and I look at life like, uh, like an internship. So you guys know like an internship, um, you know, let's say you go to college and you land an internship and there's like a pool of interns and they only choose one, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, that's how life works is there's only one spot. Right. I, I always say there's only one spot for the throne. There's only one. And so you and several other people may want the same thing, but who's going to get it? The one who doesn't give up throughout all the stuff that life throws at you. So life is going to test you. Like life is going to see how bad you want it. But a lot of us see it as, oh, I'm going through this, so it's not meant to be. Or, or God didn't allow it to happen. Like, nah, bro, you gave up. It's, it's how you react towards it, too. That's right. Longevity, bro. Yep. How exactly. long can you do this for? That's right. Until, like, whether you get the the turn back right now or not, the payback right now or not, can you keep doing this even when it doesn't give you anything back? Yep. Will you continue to follow your passion, your dream, your <clears throat> goals, even when no one else is supporting you? Right. Are you willing to go through that lonely ass road on your own mm -hmm. with nobody's help? Think about this. Like I, we, we, I have a great support system. We all have great support systems, but at the end of the, at the end of the day, no one's going to make you walk that road that you're always meant to be in. That's right. Mm -hmm. Like, it's up, it's up to you. And that's one thing that we've had conversations about back and forth. It's like, yo, like, it's up to you to get up. It's up to you to want it. It's up to you to go and do what you need to do. But if you don't want to, then don't sit down and complain about it. Yep. Because that's your choice. Yep. And I'm sorry. I can't really help you out anymore because we can give everybody's advice. We can give people advice left and right every day. But it's up to them to... Take it in, endure it. How you said, like, we have similar people that we look up to that, that impacted mm -hmm. us. Harry Thomas, Steve Harvey, yep. Inky Johnson, all these people that we never met. But yet they've made so much of an impact in our lives. That's life. right. It's like, damn. Yeah, but no, man, that ties in well with, uh, I mean, my career as, uh, as a trainer, right, is, is um, the, so transitioning from football was extremely easy. Like, yeah. you know, I, I did – football sports all my life can, I've, can I've, we say that anybody that plays sports one time transitions into training because it's i mean easy. You, Jose? you definitely <laughs> should right if, if if you don't know what you want to do at least at a certain point that's that's one of make money out of something you're good at doing, it's it's you know? good money yeah. it's it's good money you know uh, you may have to start off charging very minimal for sessions but like it, it's really good money once once you get more season and everything like that but it's it transitions so well man and yeah. and but not i'm not saying it's like super easy because some people make horrible yeah, coaches some, some people are meant to be coaches <laughs> right. and some people are just meant to be athletes right exactly exactly and so but for me it, it was an easy transition especially from the training that I have gone through. So I know what the human body can go through and I know psychologically and mentally how to push them through that, right? And, but you know, you got to treat everybody differently, especially in the Northwest where a lot of us are soft up there and, mm -hmm. and cupcakes. <laughs> and uh, so, but- oh, uh, That's here too, bro. That's here too. Man, I'd rather have, I'd, I always say I'd rather have 10 dogs and 100 cats, man. And, and, and so you're either going to become a dog training with me or, or you're going to ask for a refund or not show up next month, whatever it is. But that, <laughs> that, that's, that's how I want it. <laughs> Look, man, if, 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 show up one if you're going, if you're going to be a product of mine, uh, you're, you're going to be great, you know, and, or else it's, that makes. Oh, you got, you got to know what kind of circle you're in. My name look bad. Right. If you're around, if you're around 10 highly motivated people and you don't want to be, bro, you're going to fall off and you're going to, you're going to be the odd one out. Yep. You're going to be the ugly duckling of the group because right. you're just like, damn, like, nah, I don't want to. Do it. And it's, again, it's cool. But, hey, we're going this way. Right. And we're, we're going to endure it. We're going to be power. If you want to stick around this way, hey, that's on you. Yep. Be around 10 other sheep. Yep. You know? A lot of people don't know this, man, but, but once I started my business, it was November of 2019. Um, first of all, I had – transitioned from 24 hour fitness. So I was actually, my last year of college, I was doing sessions as a trainer there at 24. Yeah. So it was, I was freaking busy, but once college ended, I dropped out immediately. I didn't want a degree. didn't care for a degree. I dropped, I knew what I wanted to do and I didn't, I didn't need a de degree for it. And my football scholarships were over. So, um, right away I started my business against the advice of everybody. Oh, you know, you don't have enough clients. You're not going to make it. Da, 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 da. They're always going to do that. Three yeah. months later, I mean, that was going into 2020, the pandemic, 
right? So all, yeah, I got to a point where I was starting to gain, gain some momentum as far as getting new clients, and then bam, we're shut down, and I'm doing Zoom sessions, I'm doing park sessions, I'm doing at-home sessions for people who, you know, didn't care about COVID like me, yeah. um, and so I was hanging on by a thread for like that whole year, and then when the vaccine came out is when um, word of mouth just went crazy, and had over like 50 plus clients and, and business was booming. Um, and funny enough, the people at that gym who uh, told me that I wasn't going to work out, that gym never reopened. Ooh. <laughs> so I made the right move. He's like, karma, bitch. <laughs> I, I, I bet on myself, man. I bet on myself. And, that's, and that's, the, that's the best and safest bet. That's, that's right. That's up to you. That's the thing, yep. though. Like, obviously, like you said, um, COVID hit. There was a million excuses for you not to show up. Right. And your clients. Yep. But you said you did park sessions, you did this and that. That's the thing that a lot of people don't do. Once it gets hard, they give up. Yep. You know what? No, what if COVID hits or hits me or, oh, you know what? I don't want to do it in the park. I want to do it inside the AC, you know? Like, it's stuff like that. 100%. That's, that makes you stand out of the rest of, of the That's people, right. you know? And you know what's crazy is I wasn't, uh, for some reason, for some stupid reason, I was not eligible for unemployment. I was like the perfect example of somebody who should get some unemployment checks, but I'm grateful I never got them because they kept me hungry. They kept me like, I gotta, I gotta figure it out. I gotta make it work. It's sad to say too, like if we relate it to everything we're talking about, like people that are giving stuff, they don't know how to value it. Right. So we weren't given that, right. We still had to work for, for our paycheck and we had to work for a better tomorrow. Yeah. So now when, now those people that had it easier in a sense that were giving it, bro, they lost it and they lost it fast. You know, now they're here trying to figure out what to do next. Yo, we started this way before everybody, and we had to go through those trials and tribulations where, yo, fuck, we're, we got 100 bucks, dog. What do we do? Yep. We have 50 bucks. What do we do? Mm. Hey, fuck it. Let's share a meal today. Oh, right. fuck it. Let's not do this today. Let's do. Hey, so we know what it is to not have anything and then have everything. Yep. We know how it is to feel lonely and to have everybody around us and still feel lonely. Mm. But now we know what it's. What's best for us? That's right. We know how to feel complete. We know how to feel sane. We know if we go through this depression, anxiety, mental moment, we know, okay, well, let's do this. Yep. And if anybody has something to say about it, well, let that outside noise stay outside. Yep. And it's, and, and it's great to see who's in your corner during during those low times mm -hmm. of, of not having much and, and everything yeah. like that. Because, I mean, I always I, – I heard this from Conor McGregor too, but it's like I, I only care to eat with the people I starved with, you know, and, and because – Everybody, like, you could, of course, you want to meet connections and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm glad I met y'all. Like, y'all seem like great people. But, yeah, man, at the end of the day, it's just like who was there. Uh, the people that you at least knew mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the time in your life, how did they treat you when you were in the low points of your life? Okay, so right? One thing I do want to ask you is how do you deal with, with people wanting to be in your life but not add any value to you? They're not in my life. I say, uh, straight up. He's like, they're not in my no, life. no, thank you. I'm good. I'm, I'm filled, man. I'm completely filled. And, and that's step one for anybody who wants to be successful or happy in life is you have to have, uh, self-love. You have to be filled with it because if you go into any sort of relationship with like your, your, let's just say your heart is like a glass. If you go into any sort of relationship with an empty glass, then you're expecting this person to fill the glass. But what happens when they screw you over and leave, they take that with you and you're empty again right? And you're hurting. But if you find a way to, to have that self-value, self-appreciation, self-love for yourself, yeah. and you're filled, everybody else just adds a little value. But when they leave, they won't take anything away. Like that, uh, that viral video too. And didn't, didn't get some noise, not annoyed, but he hears it a lot from me. It's like that viral video sound. It's like, there's people that came into your life to, for you to show them what love was. Mm -hmm. But in reality, they also came into your life to show you what self-love was. And coming to understanding with that, too, is like, yo, I love you, and I want to love you, but why am I hurting so much that I'm losing who I am, Yep. and you're over there not, not caring? Yep. Do you let go of people fast right now, too? And, and Extremely it, and, fast. And is that something you had to build up, or is that some, something you always were? You know, it's interesting. Uh, I actually just came out with an episode on my podcast um, that explained, and it was about, like, people believing in you or not believing in you. And the moment where I really started to understand that 
you don't need certain people in your life or people just because they're even family or close to you, they could very well not give a damn about you. Yeah. It's when I was sick. When I was sick in Mexico, nobody called me and nobody came to check up on me. And I wasn't, I wasn't mad. I was like, okay, thank you. Like, I, I get it now. It was... I, I understand life now, mm-hmm. right? I, I get it that people really don't have to, like, essentially most people care about themselves. And you know what? They should right? Because before you can help anybody else out, you got to help yourself out. So it helped me understand that, man, I can be around all these people, but how many of them really care about me? How many of them have my best interests at heart? And if they don't, again, I'm not offended. It's just like, if I can't rely on somebody, why would I want you in? Why, Why do I need you in my circle? Because I know I can rely on myself, so I'm good there. But then it's just like, and so you asked, like, if, you know, if I get rid of people extremely fast. I, I do, man, because, um, one, I'm, I'm filled, right. I, there's, there's nothing more I, I need in my life. And, and as far as like, you know, love or appreciation, yeah. but two, like the quote I said earlier, birds of a feather flock together. Like yeah. our subconscious mind is always running. So, and for those people who don't know what your subconscious mind is, it's like the back of your mind that you're not really like thinking about it, but like, let's say like I'm hearing people gossip and, that will tell my subconscious mind, it'll remind it of gossiping. So maybe I'll go and gossip later, right? Yeah. That's why I'm very cautious of what I watch, what I, what I listen to, and everything like that. Because especially, like, as a child, so I'm very cautious of my son. But, like, your subconscious mind is always running. And so why do I want people in my life who are just going to complain all the damn time, right? That's putting negativity into my subconscious mind. It's like, I, I don't need that. Like, I want people to be real with me. I don't want just positive people who are always going to mm-hmm. tell me what I want to hear. Like, yeah. tell, me, tell me what I need to hear, but don't be a negative person. You know what I'm saying? Don't be someone who you just want to take. You're just only, only selfish. Like, and so it's hard, man. It's, it's, it's hard. I, I've, I've looked for people, good people long enough, and, and I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. And so, but I mean, I, I'm definitely open to, to people, the right people coming into my life, but um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm at that point where that party just serving up. I've looked for people so much in my life. That's huge, mm-hmm. and I think as humans, we we always want to look for that love, that comfort, that embracement. In reality, like bro, all you needed was your own. That's right. Are you good with the when you look in the mirror? Are you happy with that person right there, or do you hate the image of that person? And if you hate it, what can we do to change it? Again, it depends on who you're around with. People, if are they working on their self development also, or are they just are they trying to mask everything by going out and and staying the same in the same realm? Like we we've, we've been blessed enough to keep growing, but we've yep. kept growing because we've decided to make changes to ourselves within ourselves that we just hey daily, weekly. If we're not growing, we're just wasting time. Right. There's so many people that we have yet to meet and yet to impact. And like today, a whole different state by the grace of social media, we got we got to align and, and we got to to finally meet. But it's it's just that like if you don't go out there and do your own work, then why why are you complaining about That's it? That's right. That's right. So I mean, self love is a huge thing. A lot of people don't have it. A yeah. lot of people are are trying to figure out how to love themselves. Yeah. Do you have like a if your son is older and he says dad like. How do you love your, how do I get to love myself? Right. Let's say I didn't do my job. Yep. And he <laughs> yep. doesn't know how to love himself. <laughs> I was about to be like, yo, my God. Let's, let, let's say I didn't. Yeah. And uh, I, I would say um, like some, some practicals is uh, make sure you're spending enough time alone because you can't find yourself in anyone else. Mm-hmm. And because again, how are you supposed to get to know who you are when you're just around people all the damn time like you gotta have that time of isolation i'm not saying completely alone then you can be a little weird but you want to be you want to be around people uh or sorry you want to be by, i mean it's, it's true bro. in the corner of his room alone yeah, right playing right. with his nails and shit exactly you want to call it nope nope right here but no nah, man you you gotta have that time of isolation that's where you get to know yourself because we can all probably think of somebody, if not yourselves, we can all think of somebody who kind of just went ghost for like six months. Mm-hmm. Next time we see them, they're in better shape. Yeah. They're talking differently. They're, they're, a lot of their bad habits are gone. Like yeah. when you can isolate yourself, you really get to know who you are. But people don't want to do that. They, they don't want to get to know who they are, right? Because that's a dangerous it's, thing yeah. to really it's find pretty, out who you are. pretty scary, honestly. Yes. It's you, you're going to end up letting go of the person you used to be. That's the thing. The bad habits, everything. The people around you, yep. like, 
like I feel like the people would just slowly fall off. Well, like you're not even gonna push them out of your life. They're just gonna fall. That's a off. great point. Well, it's the like all right. Like last year we went, we partied a lot, right? Like that's what. No, nah, we like didn't. How I've, like, I've, like, I've, <laughs> they said, nah, just you. <laughs> they said it was just you, bro. Oh, we were. I was alone in there. <laughs> oh, I was alone there. <laughs> I was on prep, and I, the time I got off prep, I was like, hey, let's party. Oh, no. oh thank God this dude didn't party with us. Imagine. Oh, he says he Jose. He says on prep, but what he would do? Just drink straight tequila. <laughs> So smart. <laughs> He's like smart. But like literally, I was telling uh shout out Joaquin, mm-hmm. our, our host here, and I was telling I was like, I thought success was being out, being around a lot of people, spending money, being in different and parties and, and always on the go. And one of the biggest things of how we're just saying right now, the reason why I was doing it so much because I was so scared to be alone. Because mm-hmm. I didn't want to deal with what I was going through. I didn't deal. I didn't want to deal with depression. I didn't want to deal with anxiety. I didn't want to deal with, man, maybe I'm not a, a good dad right now because I'm not present until I decided if my back was against the wall, dude, I, I had nothing. There was nothing left for me to do. Bes- like, I was having more depressive thoughts, more suicidal thoughts. I was, I didn't want to be around people. I would have smiled with everybody around, but as soon as I got home, I hated, I hated it. I leave the TV on. I leave the lights on because I hate the darkness. And I was like, man, like, Bro, like, I'm done, bro. Like, this is easier. This is easier. Mm. So my biggest thing is, like, you know, like, like the devil had won at that point because I didn't want to be here. It was easier to use my 9 millimeter and and quit it right away. It was easier. The the voices were speaking way too loud already. I was done, man. That was it. But the one thing that helped me is, you know, I started praying. I surrendered. I was like, yeah, you know what? haven't talked to you in a big time, in a long time. Let me, let me just talk. And as soon as I started speaking and speaking with an open heart, things started to change. Mm-hmm. And what happened there, I started making, I needed to make decisions. So there was always temptation out there. I always, I always had the opportunity to go out. Oh, yeah. I still have the opportunity to go out, be here, be there. Yep. And one thing, my, my, my friends would not let me lie. Like, hey, what are we doing? I'm going home, bro. I'm going to go with my kids. Well, I'm going to, you know, I just want to, I just want to be home. Like, I go to the gym. Like, Changing what was I was feeding my mind, listening to more spiritual music, more self development, you know, even being not being afraid to cry. I may, I, I may cry three times a week. It's right. my body releasing. Right. I need to release all these emotions that I'm building up because as men we build up a lot of stuff that we don't get to talk about it with other people because we feel like they're not going to understand. But in reality, it's just who you who are you talking to this to, who are you sharing this with, right? So for me, it was like. Yeah, I was ready to give up, but God wasn't ready for me to give up. Mm. He said, no, don't listen to that side of it. Hey, keep going. I'm going to show you a little bit of grace. Yep. Here's a little bit of this. Let me, let me hype you up a little bit. And yep. he showed me grace. And when, as soon as he showed me grace, I said, here we go. Let's go. It's time. So I s- keep blessing me and keep showing me hardships. Test me. And as soon as you test me, I promise you I'm going to do what's right. Yes, sir. And if I fail in any sort of way, I'll make it up and I'll, I will fix it. I'm not a perfect man, but I'm, sh- I'm damn sure going to keep working tor- towards to be. Because, again, I got my kids. So I got to show my kids that I can be. That's right. And who do I want? Like uh, Chris says it, like, when your kids get older, even your son, when he gets older, imagine, imagine this. Other people that you're changing lives right now, you're helping so many people, them seeing your son and be like, man, your dad helped me and your dad is a great man. What does that do to you as a person? You're like, damn, yep. bro. You know, instead yep. of, again, that self-talk, I want to be remembered as someone that I was able to impact and change people's lives. And I don't want to be remembered for somebody that, that could have done it, that should have done it. Mm-hmm. That hot, you know, because when we go nine feet under, everybody comes and shows you love. And it sounds pretty, pretty extreme, but I'm going to have a guest list. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to have a guest list for who can show up because I know damn well the amount of people that are in my life right now, and I can call them up and they'll answer me. And they'll call me whenever they need me too, yep. and we can have a conversation. And we never ask for anything in return besides our energy. Yep. Give me your energy, and I'm going to give it right back. Yep. Show me your love, and I'm going give to it, give it to you right back. I don't need people that are just going to come and take. I don't need takers, but takers prey on givers. Right. So it's just that finding that, that, oh, uh, yeah. that, that middle and, part to it. <clears throat> no, man, I appreciate you saying that because you're talking about really that, that low phase of kind of life forcing you to have that self-reflection, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but that low phase, man, we, 
we need it. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we need to go through those um, so we can, so we can come up, man, and, and understand what it takes to get back there. So yeah. like, I, I can't do the things I used to do because I know I'm going to get back to that low point in my life. So I know yeah. what to avoid. And what's that thing? People start changing and they see the glory. They, they get the grace. Oh, I'm doing so good. Time to go back. Yep. Get your ass back do down, once home again. Boy. It's yep. like, no, mom is great. Like, what are you doing? Yep. And it's again, like why we, we just, people get in a cycle and uh, one thing I was telling Dylan yesterday is like sometimes we get in the carousel and it's just spinning. And sometimes it spins way too fast. You have no control over it. And if we have every power in your body to slow it down, right? your world is still going to spin. It's, it's inevitable. It's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. But how fast it is going to spin, it's up to you. And what you do with that spin is up to you. Do you want to make the right choices out of it or do you want to just stay in the, in the loop? Sad loop, depressive loop. You know, suicidal loop, or mm -hmm. do you want a happier, a happier side? That's right. You know, you want to, you know, is this living a happier life? You live a happier life when you're living in your purpose. Be purposeful in this shit. Be purposeful in your life because if you're not, you're always gonna wonder. Yep. What if? What if this was? What if this was that? What if he was here? What if she was here? The can't, what ifs will kill you, bro. Can't live the in those what ifs anymore. You. you know. Yep. You're talking about so bringing it back to self love. Like, what yeah. are the practicals? How can someone? Um, you know, grow in that. Yeah. And so that's it. I, time of isolation, you know, because... Give us your top, your top three that, you, that you, if someone right... Whoever's listening to right now watching, I appreciate every single one of you guys. Love you guys because without you guys, we wouldn't be here. But your top three mandatory things to living a happier life. Mandatory to living a happier life. Um, you hit one of them on the head, which is going after your purpose. Going after your purpose, because if, if I didn't have a purpose for my life, I have every right to be depressed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, what are you waking up for every day, right? What are you, um, what are you working towards every day? You know, because if you're just working towards something that is, is pointless and kind of meaningless, then, then yeah, you're, you're going to get to those low phases. But um, working towards your vision, having that love for yourself, right? Just spending time of isolation, um, doing words of affirmation in the mirror, telling yourself, like you shouldn't hear a compliment that you haven't heard from yourself, right? You should look in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm amazing, I'm incredible. I mean, I, I'm the greatest speaker in the world. I, all these things, like I, I speak all these things. And so when people say, when people, someone gives you a compliment, you're like, wow, like, thank you so much. Like, bro, that just means that you, you didn't say that enough to yourself, right? Sure. Like definitely, you know, ha have love and appreciation for the people who, who say good things and show love, but definitely uh, should be in those words of affirmation. And um, so we had uh, going after a purpose, your vision, self-love, and man, that third thing, I would say just continuing to grow, continue. You should always keep growing in your life. And like, what does that look like for me? Like I read every day of my life, like, cause, and that's the biggest thing I'm, I'm, I'm focused on with my son's education and development is reading because like, so he's going into first grade, but I want him to be ready like at a second, third grade level. So we're, we're, we're grinding. <laughs> but, uh, because here's the thing is that if he can read, you can unlock anything in life. Where do we get everything from? Reading. Everybody gets something from, from reading something at some and point. And understanding it too. And understanding. And what does reading do? Reading, it, it helps your, um, your mental development. It yeah. helps your vocabulary. It helps your, um, just your brain's functioning. Like it, there's so many benefits to reading every day. But that third thing, man, is always continuing to make those self-improvements for sure. It's, damn, it's a now, now that you touched, uh, um, that you talked about your son, I want to know what is it, how did it feel, or how is, what were the challenges of you being a dad at 20? Yeah, man, it was, uh, you know what, funny enough, not as, not as challenging as most would think, because I have eight siblings, six of them are younger than me, Mexicans, bro. Chief. Six there was no TV back then. <laughs> there was no there TV, was back then. <laughs> TV back then. No cable? What was cable? <laughs> right, right. I had six younger siblings, and I, I really helped take care of, um, like, the, f I want to say four or five that were younger than me. Like, I, eight years old, I was changing diapers. Oof. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when it came for me to have my son, obviously, you don't plan to be such a young parent, but I, I, was, I was ready. Like, there wasn't a time where I folded, you know, and, and I was alone. I had no family in Oregon, obviously, shared custody. So, whenever I had my son, it was just me. And so, um, 
always, you know, knew the diaper thing, knew the formula thing, yeah. uh, every, figuring everything out. And, uh, but the biggest thing that helped me in parenting is I never read any parenting books, even though people should. I've never gone watch any parenting seminars or nothing like that. The biggest thing that helped me was reflecting on my childhood. Was, was, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, but looking at everything, what worked, what didn't work. And the number one thing um, that I suggest for parents is you have to be the example. Like you just, there, there's no other way around it. You have to be the example because think about it. Like maybe you guys can relate, but at one point your parents probably told you not to cuss. Mm-hmm. Oh but, yeah, my mom still gets mad right yeah. now. I'm like, mom, what the? F-? And she's like, what the? And I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. Does your mom cuss? Hell no. She doesn't. No. Okay. Okay. Definitely no. My no. dad always. Is that, so that, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that, there we go. There we go. So it's 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 saying don't cuss, but you're cussing in the house, right? Yeah. It's saying you know don't do this, but you're doing that in the house. Like you have to show them. Somebody has to show them a different way, right? Yeah. So you have to be the, ex- and, and this goes into everything. Like if you don't want angry kids, control your freaking anger, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. If you don't want spoiled kids, then you better be a grateful person, right? Like you have to be that example it's, it's for a, them. Again, it ties to what we're all saying, following your dreams and your purpose. And that's one thing that I, I stuck by since I started this three years ago. I'm going to follow my dream and my purpose and, so one day I can tell my kids, whatever they want to do, follow it because your dad did it. Because what, what's the, everybody says it, man. What I, I could have done it. I wish I was this. And you can right now. I highly encourage ask your parents, your aunt, your uncle, uh, someone that's much older than you. What did you always want to be? Are you that right now? Right. But no, nah, I've always wanted to be this. And I and I understand situations, environments. It happens. But why do we have to live that same, that same life? Why do we have to repeat that same cycle? Right. It's just, you know, sometimes you get you get marked as the black sheep, as the one that is, how do you say, it? the one that just wants to rebel out, right? Because you're following your dreams. Right. You should have followed your dreams, bro. You're a dad. Why would you do that? Yep. Heard why that. You, why? You, why are you spending so much time? You could be with your kid. Why are you still playing football? Yeah. Why? Why are you? Why are you there? Why are you doing that? Be home, get a stable job, be with your kids, do yep. this, do that. That's that's the thing. And I've said it on the podcast before. Um, a lot of people use their kids as an excuse. A lot of people use their kids. I don't I personally don't have kids. I'm way too young for kids right now. But a lot of people use their kids as an excuse. Yep. Oh, I, I can't I can't follow my dream because I have a kid now. Yep. And that's is that, is that's that what, what your is that what your kids want to hear? Like, I gave up on football because of you. Yeah. That right. You don't or at or, all. you know, you, you, you were born when I was in junior college and I could, I could have gave up and just, you know, done the quote unquote responsible things that everybody's telling me to do. Or I could figure out a way to still work, provide, still do classes, still and, put in the and work. And you could tell your son, because of you, it, it made me push harder. That's right. It made me want more. It made me wanted to change and give you a better life. People yep. don't understand that just yet. But I always, I always speak to this and I always tell my my kid's mom, like, yo, like, I'm grinding so hard so my kids can have everything they ever wanted and just have the opportunity to become anything they ever wanted. That's right. They want to do become have a business. All right, how can we invest? They want to go go to this school here. Okay, financial aid isn't a problem. Mm-hmm. There was one part of Eric Thomas. He was like, my kids were going to college. They were they were talking about FAFSA and student loans. <laughs> don't worry about that. Dad got it already. Now I got everything's paid. So yeah. imagine that. Being able to have the opportunity to invest in your kids. And everything else, cars, house, that, that's not for them. That's for you. Right. That's just that's just the byproduct of your hard work. That's right. My kid's still gonna ride a bike. Yep. But he, he can also drive whatever car he wants at the design time. And if if he's not performing yep. and what I know he could be. Then you know you're not gonna get that luxury because everything comes from hard work. Yep. We got taught earlier, cut the yard, mm-hmm. clean clean the cars, do this, do that. We got taught earlier, here's five dollars for washing the car. Now five dollars is like, bro, what the fuck? Can't <laughs> buy shit with five bucks. What am I gonna do with this? Yeah. But, but you worked your ass off for those five bucks. Yeah, it's, right. again, we learned way earlier mm-hmm. what it was. Now it's up to us to teach our kids. Right. 
not just that, but a much bigger purpose. And a lot of people who are watching this can easy, can easily be like, you know, but my, my dad was this and I never became that. Or my dad wasn't this, but I still became it. Like, uh, there's a lot of caveats to it that people want to throw in there. But, be, so I always follow it up with, so obviously be the example, but I also follow it up with be involved, right? You yes. have to be involved. As much as you want to be the example and be great, you got to be involved because either you're raising your children or somebody else's. Someone else's. Yeah, That's you it. You can't be mad however they turned up. You can't be mad if, if they're doing everything that they say on TV, if, if they're becoming who their friends are. You can't be mad because yeah. you you neglected your responsibility. And then also, like, for those parents that are watching too, don't feel, don't feel guilty because other people are telling you how bad you are. Right. You know, you're... You're trying your best to teach your kid, to teach your your kids how how to be kids and how to be little grown adults. Your parenting strategies are not somebody else's. Right. So, you know, don't feel bad about that. Don't take it to heart. You know, they just have another way. Again, our parents also try to talk to us how to how to be parents. And right. it's like, yo, like I'm I'm learning my way. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. I see what works for me, what hasn't. And, you know, I'm still learning. Yep. You know, my son is three. He's, he's a boy, man. Like, boys oh, yeah. Are, boys are tough. Yep. But then I also have a daughter. And, again, like, my daughter's showing me, like, patience, compassion. Right. You know, love. And as much as I want to be hard on her, too, it's like, yo, like, nah, it's cool. Like, daddy got you. I'm going to protect you. But I'm also going to show you how to how to carry yourself in this world. Right. But in order for me to do that, I got to work on me. Yep. If I'm acting a fool, if I'm acting out, if I'm being this or that, I can't teach her how to be that. Right? Yep. Because now it's like. You're doing this, but now you're. Not so, at so it. let me ask both of you guys a question. That you guys are dads. You guys are big on self love, on everything. How how can you? How do I say this? How can you deal with self love when you have a kid? Obviously, that's your new love. That's your new attention. How do you deal with that? Well, that I mean, I feel like that goes that ties into the first two things I said with with being the example and. Um, being uh, involved. And what I mean by being an example in, in that, with that specific question is, um, uh, there's a quote, I believe Wayne Dyer said it. He said, if there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. So if you are somebody who, like, let's say your kid's around and they hear you, like, talking crap about people and complaining and this and that, you're showing somebody who you have internal things that you need to work on, that you don't, you don't have that self-love. I don't see self-love there, right? Mm-hmm. And then... And then just when it comes to being involved, like you can be the greatest person in the world, but are you around your kids enough for them to see that? Right. And so with me, I was, I was extremely blessed and I mean, worked for it. But, um, so with, with college, I went to a fairly small school because I wasn't willing to go away from my son or even somewhere nearby that wasn't going to let me bring my son with me to practice to everything. I needed full access. So there was one school, shout out to Willamette University who gave me that opportunity. And so he was with me everywhere. Like I said, it costed me playing time, practice time and all that, but I I wouldn't change a thing for the world. Then going into my business, he was with me every, when it, when it was my custody time with him, he was with me everywhere I went. I think I saw a picture of you in the, in the locker rooms, yep. changing them. Yep, right there. With gear on and everything. With gear yeah. right there. You just got a poopy diaper. Let's, let's take care of that. And I just, yeah, I wasn't willing to, to, to budge on that, man, because my time with him was already limited, right, because of the shared custody thing. So it's just like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit to being in as, as involved as I can. And obviously there's things where you got to handle business and stuff like that. But um, no, nah, man, yeah, I, and then – uh, that's, that was a big reason why I started my business too, before, you know, I was ready, quote unquote. And, um, was because I I wanted, not only did I want to be involved, but I need him to see how I conduct myself. I need him to see how I speak to people, how I engage to people, right? Respectful, all that things. And, and the biggest thing that I wanted him to see was how I handle high pressure situations, right? Because, most people, when, when, even if they drop a plate, they'll be, ah, oh, they'll freak out, right? But, like, I, I want him, he needs to see somebody that's poised, someone that's calm, cool, and collect, no matter what you throw at me. Because, and that was just the ass whoopings I took from life. Like, it, it's, it, it's got me to a point where, um, you know, we can't control the things that happen to us, but we can retro- control how we respond to them, right? That's something that you said earlier. Yeah. And if, if somebody masters the response over their life, you can't mess with them. Sorry. You're going to have to go mess with somebody else. Yeah, you, have, you have to learn when, when to let go of certain situations because there's a lot of, there's always going to be things every single day of your life that are going to happen 
And there's going to be a lot of things also that you have no control over. Yep. You have no control over that person being mad. You have no control over that person doing this. And it's just like, okay, how can I deal with this? How am I going to react to this? Again, how you're saying, in order for me to teach my kids how to be patient, how to have love, how to be respectful, I also got to do those things. And again, we're not perfect. I, have, I've, I, was, I wasn't this person prior to fighting my demons. For sure. I wasn't this person prior to doing that self-development that I had to do, which was sitting alone, which was not doing things that, were, that kept fitting into that, that other ego. I had to learn how to let go and how to let things be. be. So that's where it came for me. Like, all right, damn, this should happen. I'm, mm, mm-hmm. and it, you know what? Instead of doing this, I'm going to feed my mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry a little bit. I'm going to yep. feed my mind very positive things. So as soon as I get home, I have an hour. Okay, relax. Think about what just happened. Analyze it. Okay, this is, okay, this is a good part of it. Okay, this is a bad part of it. Okay, how do I handle it? That's right. And then, you know, I'm a big Kevin Gates fan too. And it's how do I put that energy that I'm, that I'm getting, how can I put that into what I'm doing? My work. The gym, you know, my friends. Right. Like my friends need me to show up the same way I need them to show up. And if I'm not showing up for myself, then I cannot be there either. Yep. I cannot help lead in a sense of my lane because we're all leaders. Mm-hmm. It's just when we come together, we're a fucking powerhouse. That's what people don't, don't really see or understand yet. That's like, yo, like, no one here is bigger than anybody. We're all standing next to each other, and we go forward. Yep. Not one of us is in front, and everybody's no, no, no. We're all we're all kings. Yep. We're all leaders. Just we're leaders in our own lane. Yep. And when we come together, it's just a powerhouse. And the beauty of that, bro, and, and you talking about like even when you're battling your demons is, and this is also the beauty of being a young parent is that your children get to see you come up, mm-hmm. and they get to see you grow and and see you make mistakes, but but learn from it, right? Yeah. And and same with me. Like like my son has literally been there with me. When we had zero bucks, living paycheck to paycheck, lights shut off. I moved the bed to the living room so it can be near the fireplace. Like, he's, he's been there with me, you know what I'm saying? And he's also seen where we went from there, right, and, and everything like that. But even with just, like, you know, your mentality and, and psychologically and your mindset, like, your, your children have seen you grow, right? And, and so they know what it's like to make that change in your life to make that pro- progress in your life. And so that, that's, that's the beauty of it, man. One thing that I, I told um, Pepe over there, and, and, and it came from a, a place of just love, and, and really and I had a deep dive into this. I want to be present for my kids. I don't want to be the depressive dad. I don't want to be the present but not really their dad. Right. I, I want to be happy. I don't want my kids to see, see me be happy. They deserve to have a a complete dad that's there, present, fulfilled, and purposeful. They don't need a dad that's empty inside, that's, that's right. having, these, having these bad thoughts every single time. But where does that come from? I need to, I need to deep dive into what's, what's the root of this. Mm-hmm. Let go of things that already happened. What did I take from this? I'm this person now. Yep. So when I smile to my kids, they're getting an actual smile this time. They're not getting a, I'm going to pretend like I'm smiling today. But deep down, I'm fucking, I'm hurting. No, no. I'm happy, bro. I yep. love you and thank you. You know what I mean? Like yep. even telling my kids thank you and I love you, it goes the world. And like I tell my, I tell, I tell Noah, Noah, I love you, love you, daddy. I'm like, damn. <laughs> even if he doesn't look at me, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> talk, talk to him, man. Especially the Latinos, right? Yeah, talk, talk, talk to him, him man. And talk, tell, telling your kids, man, I love you. Telling your your parents, I love you. Telling your friends, I love you. Hugging your people, hugging your loved ones. Yep. The more you hug them, the more you show them that love the more they know where it comes from. That's right. The, the more they, they get to like, hey, maybe today you didn't get told I love you, bro, but I love you. And it goes a long way. Man, I'm love. You could be love, man. There's a lot of love out there for you. You're, there's people that actually love you. If you feel alone, surround yourself with the right people that have the right energy and the right intentions. They're going to come and fill up your cup and not just take, take from you every single time. Exactly. Every time I said, said it before, I want everybody to bring a plate to plate to this table. I don't want people to get a plate and take it a go. Yep. Come. Let's that's let's, perfect. Let's let's build. And I I'm I love you, man. I love you to death. Yep. No matter what happens, the good, the bad, or the ugly, I'm gonna love you. And that that goes so so far and so long. It's just energy. Let me hug you, bro. A lot of people need hugs. Yep. So I'm gonna hug you. 
I'm going to tell you I love you, and I'm going to tell you I'm proud of you. And I just want you to know that everything you're doing right now, I'm proud of you. You're surviving. Just you got to keep going. I know today you want to give up. I know today was a little bit too tough for you, but don't worry about it. Tomorrow is going to be better, and tomorrow, I promise you, it's not going to be today. That's beautiful, man. I mean, that's that, we don't understand how much that means to, to the children, man, because, you know, something that I noticed with raising my son didn't even think about this until until recently, but something that has happened while raising him that I've noticed is that it's been healing my inner child. It's mm. it's been healing that lonely kid. I was gonna get to that question, but you beat it's, me too. Uh, uh, man, I, he made me think of it, man. But but it's just yeah, man. That that kid that you know was was you know lonely, nobody to play with, that was neglected, that was abused, that was um, just not highly valued or not not loved or at least shown that he was loved. Um, he's this little boy, man, he's healing that person. And, uh, going back to one of the first questions you asked me was, you know, about that, that video that, that the most viral one, that's like 13 million views on, on Instagram. It was, uh, he was just saying that, um, he was like, you know, since I was born, you've always loved me. Uh, what else did he say? He was saying, um, you're, you're my best friend. He's like, you mean everything to me. That like blew me away because we, we say, I love you. Like we're, again, like I said, we're very transparent. We're, we're very intellectual with each other, but I didn't even know he could say that. Like, I didn't even know he could, he could comprehend something like that and then say it. So, and then a lot of people in the comments are like, how is he not bawling his eyes out? Well, one, I ran out of tears, like I said, but, (laughs) but two, uh, I was so stunned like a deer in headlights when he said that, like, I was just like, Wow. So that, that helped me reflect on a lot that, uh, cause you know, as parents, even if we, you know, are, are doing the right things, we still question, are we doing a good job? Right. Like we still question, like, am I, am I a good parent? You know, am I enough? Am I enough? And then, so literally just this kid hopping on the podcast, which actually was kind of a joke. Like he was just going to hop on. I press record on things and maybe I'll find a cute clip and post it. But it was never meant to be an actual episode. That but, happened to us. That happened oh to yeah. Us. It's crazy that you're talking about that because about a year, yeah, a year ago, mm-hmm. a little bit, year and a month or so now, we recorded with one of our good friends right now, Dre. Um, he used to own South Made Rancho, and we recorded with him. And then at the end, we had finished already, and his son Gage at that time, I believe, was like eight, seven, eight, yeah. Somewhere around there. Somewhere around. Young kid, right? That <laughs> you guys time. have posted him, right? Yeah, yeah. I've seen him. Yeah. Yeah, so – it wasn't, again, it wasn't our idea. And Dre was like, yo, do you mind if, like, Gage comes out, um, you ask him a couple questions, just for me. I just want the clip for me. And I was like, you know what? I was like, dude, like, they're just running like a regular pod. It's going to be a B-roll for your episode. Like, it may not be we d- Like, crazy. first of all, we didn't even want to turn on the cameras. It was just going to be, like, <laughs> yeah. a good conversation. Right, right. Just right. Like, yeah, it's just, it's going to be a B-roll. Like, it's going to mm-hmm. be like, oh, like, this is your dad, or da and what you said right now, early, right, right before this, like healing an inner child, healing a uh, side of me that I, I don't even know, and it started, and it started off with like, hey, like, what did your, what did your dad teach you? And then he started going in, right, and I was like, oh, something came out. I was like, you know what, like, you know, your dad loves you, you know, your dad cares about you. And then he started bawling, and I seen his dad, and he started bawling. Oh, and then man. our friend Cynthia was there bawling too, and I was just like, damn. And I was like, what is one thing your dad taught you, right, and to be myself? Nah, man. And what people, <laughs> what people didn't know is him talking, I was imagining, because my son at that time was, was a little over one or almost two. Mm-hmm. I felt like that was my son. I was talking to my son because – Again, like, what we do is, is so, like, it's so demanding, right? Right. Putting clips, putting episodes, you know, recording. It, it, it turns into a lot. So I felt like I wasn't being a great dad. I wasn't being present. Mm. So him speaking, it got me thinking, like, man, this is one, one day this will be, will be Noah. So I started crying, and I was like, you know what? Like, it ended up being, like, a 15-minute, like, little pod, right? Mm-hmm. But I posted that clip. Within a day, it was, like, a million views on TikTok. Mm. It's like, yo, like, where's the episode? Where's the episode? And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to post it. Boom. 16,000 in a day. Like, it just went wild. But it was funny, too, because everybody thought, like, his dad was dead. He's like, damn, rest in peace, his dad. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 he's alive. His dad's behind the camera. He's, he's right over there. Dead. So we finally, got, we finally got him back on the pod of this uh, about two weeks ago in San Diego. But, again, like, he's another dude. Again, 
the people that I surround myself with all self develop. Yeah. They all, they, he went away a little bit for a couple months to do that internal work. Yep. And now that he's back, he's like, yo, like, I've been just feeling so complete, so fulfilled. That's one thing that I encourage a lot of people to do is like, yo, if you're not having, if you're having a lot of bad days, a lot of sad days, like, mm-hmm. yo, get to the root of it. Get to the main point of it. Where, right. what, what is wrong? How can you change it? It's okay to be alone just for a little bit, but know when you come back, you're going to be a different monster. Yep. No one is going to, no one's going to recognize him. Like, damn, that's you. Like, mm-hmm. Yep. This is me. Absolutely. But one thing before we transition into this, what, what is something like, what is like, th- these are documents, bro. This is like a documentary for you, for when your son runs into it and is able to understand everything completely. Like he'll, he's going to hear this. He's going to see this, everything you've been doing and, and saying, he's going to hear every little thing and be like, damn. Now it's helping me, right? Right. Is there a message like you would have for your son that, you know, what he did for you, what he means to you, that, you know, m- you want him to to hear it and see it when the time comes? Man, just little Marcus, man, that that uh, if I'm if I'm talking to the, the future Marcus, it's just that you're the best part of my life, son. That's it. And uh, I'm completely filled. Like there, there's nothing more that I need. Um definitely like I said healed my inner child and um yeah he's just he's just you know my my everything I've I've completely dedicated my life to him and 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 I can confidently say that without you know saying oh but accept this or accept that and and uh because um yeah I don't know it was it was I, I wanted to be a father so bad that I thought it would never happen for some reason I don't know I just thought it would never happen but uh the fact that, you know, he came into the world and knew it was going to be a boy because it was meant to be. And uh, one of the one of the most uh, heartfelt things that he says to me was that um, was that before life, he chose me to be his dad. And uh, that that hits. Oh, shit. That definitely hits. Damn. Yep. Damn. Yep. And um, and yeah, man, he's just uh, he's he's a special little boy, and and he's just gonna get he's gonna get the best of me, man, and he's gonna get all of me. And sometimes it won't be the best of me, but he will get all of me every every single day. And um, and even a quick message, man, to those parents out there who, as some days you don't know what you're doing, just show up. That's it. Just show up. That's all you got to do. Sometimes is just is just show up. There were days, especially when he was much younger, where. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, like I, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I don't, I don't feel like a, a dad today. I feel like I'm just kind of taking care of a kid, and and uh, I, I'm clueless. But it was just like, you know, what? I'm just gonna show up. I'm just gonna show up every single day, and um, and because of that, man, he's he's he has showed me, Marcus. You have shown me how to love. Never knew what love was before I had a son. Never knew. Um, I always thought love was what can this person do for me, and if they don't do that for me or make me feel this way, then it's not love, and I'm going to get rid of them. But he showed me how to unconditionally love somebody, which is you don't have to do anything to earn it, and you can't do anything to lose it. I'm going to love you no matter what, which means I love your mom, which means I love your stepdad, which means I love your little half-brother. This is true, true love, and he showed me how, how to do that. And without him... I'd I'd be lost in that category of of love, love man. What? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hit you with some with some questions. Yes, sir. That, um, think about this. So there's there's one that I've also thought about too. If today was your last day, would you be happy? Yes, I would be extremely happy. Um, I think about this almost every day. That you know, if if something were to happen, that I'm I'm cool. I'm cool. My my son knows that uh, I love him, and I even had this conversation with him that if anything happens to me, just know that I'm always going to be with you, and you can talk to me. So we're good now. And I I've, I've reached millions of lives. Um, I feel like uh, I don't feel like I'm at the point where my legacy would live forever, but it would live for a while. Um, but uh, but yeah, I that's a great question because I genuinely take every day, like, like it's the last one. A lot of people can say that, but, uh, no, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a workaholic. I'm a proud workaholic. Um, but that's the beauty of sharing custody with my son is when I have him, it's, it's his time. When I don't have him, 
there's no social life right now. There, there's nothing but just obsession over, over what I do and, and reaching lives and impacting people. And so um, because of that, up to right now, being 26, almost 27 years old, I'm cool. I'm cool if I check out. Damn. All right. So another one that, again, these are just things that are like daily, bro. Daily, I have these like also conversations with myself. Do you believe in love and first sight? No. I don't believe in love at first sight. Um, I believe that uh, a lot of people can be deceitful with love or, or whatever. Um, I mean, shoot, man, I'm I'm, I'm single, and uh, I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm, like, just desperately looking. Like, there's a reason I'm single is because, like, it's hard, man. It's hard to trust these days, and and, um, and for me, it's like I'm, I'm, my time is very, very valuable. So if I give you some of that time, uh, it's – it's time I'm never going to get back. Yeah. And so are you adding value to my life? Are you, and then, so let's say I give somebody all this time and then they turn around and do me dirty. Right. So, um, that's a, that's a tough one for me, man. But luckily, like I say, man, I'm like, if, if I were to, to die alone, I'm completely happy because essentially we kind of all die alone. Yeah. Someone's going to mm-hmm. die first from your spouse one day. Um, and so that's what everybody's scared of, right? Like, I don't want to die alone. It's like, man, we, we all die alone. You come into this world alone and you leave alone. Um, but I'll have a lot of people there on my hospital bed. And uh, it, whether it's a sig- significant other or not, but uh, love at first sight, no, man. Um, I, I, I don't believe in it. But I, I mean, you could be super attracted to somebody and feel a certain way and pursue it and it ends up working out forever. And that's great. But uh, I mean... Um, but if we're not talking relationship, I mean, my son was love at first sight, even though when babies are born, they're ugly and they look like little aliens, <laughs> little, little <laughs> r- like, ugly, red ugly. aliens, <laughs> little pink, <laughs> pink aliens. But, um, say all kids are cute when they come out. I'm like, oh. <laughs> really? I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, so in the sense of my, so definitely love at first sight, man. hundred percent. You believe in love at first sight? No. No. And don't look at me like that, bitch. <laughs> I know who you're going to pull out right now. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you fall in love with how that person shows you that they are. You go through that process. Relationship-wise, you fall in love with their values. You fall in love with how they carry themselves. I feel like that's how it goes. What is... Can you define success? Success is the process, right? And I've heard Kobe Bryant say this. I've heard some other people say this, but success isn't the end goal. Success isn't hitting the target. Success is who you become in the process. It's who you become in the journey. And that's why I say, you know, value in life and being happy is going after your vision, is going after your purpose. Because again, it's who you're becoming. Like me, going after my football journey, right? who that turned me into, someone who was refusing to take a no for an answer, um, refusing to sit on a loss, like learning from it and keep going and persevering and um, even moving to Chicago for my first junior college, they cut me, moved out here to LA, which I don't think you guys knew, but moved out here to LA to go to Pasadena City College. And then right before, that's when I found out I was going to have a son in the Northwest. It still wasn't over. It's like, for me, it's just like, you know, it's, we're going to find a way. And, um, So again, like I say, life tests you. Life is going to throw things at you to really see how bad you want it. And those who go through that develop so much as a person, their character just skyrockets. And so success is going through the journey and and persevering through it. Are you happy? Am I happy? Mm, No. No, not at all. Because... I'm not happy with myself in general because um, I think I haven't been putting myself as a priority lately. And I've been in terms feeding other people instead of feeding myself. Powerful. So. Are you happy where you're sitting at right now? I'm extremely happy. I'm extremely happy. And you can be happy right now. You want to know how? How? Perspective perspective. And it it took me a while to learn this, but you know, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And so, um, easily like what you just said about, um, taking care of more people than myself, like your perspective can be, it's like, I have the heart to take care of people. I'm amazing. Right? Like it's all 
in your perspective when it comes to happiness because, uh, and, and I say this a lot, but um, those who are great are grateful, right? Because they're grateful for every day. They're grateful for every opportunity. They're grateful for every podcast. They're grateful for every game, every practice. And if you have the attitude of gratitude, you will be happy because we can think about all the things we don't have, all of them. But if you try to list if you try to speak out loud all the things you do have, it's going to take a very, very long time. And so that's what it always brings me back to. Whenever I, I, I'm, I'm somewhere, because, I mean, I'm always climbing. Like, that's, that's the best part of me is the worst part of me, is it's really hard to be content, but I always think back to even just my son, right? Even when things weren't so good custody-wise, it's like, look, my son is healthy. He's taken care of. Yeah. Boom. That's it. That's it. Everything else in life is extra. And so if you just, if you shift that perspective, brother, if you just shift it, then you'll look at life completely differently. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, I don't know you very well, bro, but you, um, you seem like you're, you have great character. Um, seems like you have great people in your life. Um, it seems like you have great family. Your mom makes bomb tacos, <laughs> right? Like you, you have so much, but we just got to ask ourselves, is that what we're looking at, right? Or are we looking at everything that we lack? Sure, we got to make that progress. We have to make that self-improvement, but um, you got to really appreciate where you are. You got to stop for a second and, and look out the window on the journey and really appreciate things. And Would you change anything in your life, in your 26 years of life? No, everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. You know, I, I wouldn't be who I am today. Um, I wouldn't be the father that I am. I wouldn't be the speaker that I am. I wouldn't have impacted people the way that I have if, if anything was different, right? It's like the conversation I had with my mom when she was crying on the phone, apologizing for everything. It's like, look, everything happened the way it was supposed to, right? Now, that doesn't give you an excuse in the future to dick around, yeah. right? It doesn't give you a, 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 an excuse to be limited. It doesn't give you an excuse to, to sell yourself short and be lazy. Yeah. But everything happened the way it was supposed to. But, you know, what are you going to do with it? Right. Are Did you, you uh, ever forgive your mom for that? Uh, there was nothing to forgive. But that's a great question because I verbally told her that I forgave, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because maybe that's something that she needed to hear. Exactly. I was about to say that. Yeah. Right. Right. So that, that's a great, that's mm -hmm. a great question because that's the first thing I said was, mom, I forgive you. I love you. However, stop freaking crying. Like, <laughs> like you, 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 this is everything happened the way it was supposed to. So hundred percent. Are you, are you a believer in the higher power? Yeah, man, that's a great question. Because um, I, I, I see you super, everybody sees you super motivated, like high frequency, giving out energy and all the clips and everything. Um, I do that too. We do that too. But like I've been expressing more now, like, all right, getting, tuning into my faith to the higher power, you know, it's what helped me. It's what saved me. Right. But for you, like, are you a big believer also in the higher power? And if so, like. I do believe in a higher power. I believe that, you know, somebody put us here. Mm -hmm. I grew up Christian, okay. right? Over the past few years, I've really been challenging myself because I'm like, why am I a Christian? Because that's all I was told. Why am I a Christian? Because I was born in the Western world. What if I was born in Saudi Arabia? Like I would have these questions, but mm -hmm. I'd always ignore them. But then I just got to a point where it's just like, look, you could be wrong. Because on the other side of the world, everybody is saying that you're wrong. Everybody is saying that they're right and you're wrong. Yeah. How many religions are there? How many denominations in Christianity alone are there? Like you could be a Christian, but you're doing it the wrong way because of one Bible verse you're looking at differently. And so for me, it's just like I've really challenged myself. And so um, I definitely believe in a higher power. I, and and um, I'm in a good spot with that right now. And um, But uh, I just... Uh, you know, a lot of people will, will turn to God or, or their God, right, when, at a low time. But I've learned that uh, that's not how you should do it. You know, God gave us everything, whatever you want to call God, the universe, whatever, gave us everything we needed when we were born. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything. And some people will say, oh, but, you know, these person were born in poverty and these person were born in, in wealth. I've seen successful people come from every single demographic. So we got to throw that excuse out the window. We were given everything we needed to succeed at birth. Everything from there on out is up to us. Sure, you were raised by but drug addict parents. Okay, it's got to get to a point where that's no longer an excuse, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, you know, they actually turn to faith for the first time because of hard times. But for me, it's just like, 
for my son, right? Because because people look at God as the father, spiritual father. If I'm looking at my son, it's like I don't want your crybaby ass to come to me for every problem you have. I don't want you to, to come to me only when times are hard. I don't want you to rely on me. Rely on yourself, bro. I, I gave you everything you needed. I've taught you everything. I've, I've shown you how to pick your head up. I've shown you how to get up after you fall. So I don't want you coming to me for everything. Like, so essentially, I, I feel like that's the wrong way to go at. Uh, now, no, don't worry. I respect everybody's beliefs. I respect everybody's walks with their, with their faith, with their religions. But I just believe, you know, you're crippling yourself. You're always going to cripple yourself if you're leaning towards anything or anyone in these dark, hard times, right? That's why we talked about isolation, yeah. right? And, and so, because at the end of the day, you, you know you got your back. You got to, if, if you can't carry yourself, then who's going to carry you, don't yep. you? You know what I mean? Like, and no, and no matter what walk of life that you're going about, if you don't got you, no one else will. Mm. If you don't take care of you, no one else will. That's right. And if you don't give a fuck about yourself, no one else will. Yep. Because this world is about, it's about taking, everybody's going to come to you when it needs something, right? Unfortunately, there's going to be people that are there for the right reason. Right. And it takes a certain time in your life to find those people. But for a majority part of your life, there's always going to be people that are coming and trying to take. They want to take this from you or that from you. You have this and they want that. Whatever it is, it's up to you to, to care about yourself. You know, the more that's people right. you help, the more you fulfill yourself too. Yep. I get fulfilled in that. The more people we help, that's fulfilling. That drives me to do more. That drives me to get up every day and push even harder. Yep. Yeah, it's tough some days. We don't always stay motivated. That's one thing that people get it twisted. Oh, you're always more. Nah, bro. Today was a little tough to get up. Yep. But I remember my purpose and I remember why I got up. Yep. So even though I'm not in my best mood, I'm going to make sure to show up. You know, it's fun. that's why I hate the title, motivational speaker. It now, now I got to put it there because that's that's I guess the job title, right? But you're right, motivation runs out, and uh, it comes down to discipline, right? We're not motivational, we're impactful. That's right. I I would even like inspirational speaker better because the root word of motivation is motive. Mm -hmm. Like you have yeah. a motive for something. Yeah. The root word of inspiration is inside. So you got to change from the inside. I want to help people change from the inside, not just give them a rah-rah where they'll go and do and something. And the good and the bad. Maybe you want to be something similar to us when you grow up, or maybe you don't want to be nothing like us. Right. We at least inspired you in some sort of way. That's right. You got a choice to be it. That's right. Whatever you want. Yep. Good or bad. You hate us, love mm -hmm. us. Hey, at least you took something from us. Going back to the, the spiritual aspect, I've heard uh, from you guys' podcasts and clips about, uh, and you just talked about it earlier, about reincarnation. Mm. And I mean, I don't like, I want to say fully believe in it, but dude, I think about that so often, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. um, essentially we don't know what happens when we die. Okay. Um, you know, people who talk about heaven or hell, I'm like, okay, cool. Like when, when did you go? Like, how, how was it? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not denying it. I'm not saying it's not real. Or it's not true. We just don't know. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, man, reincarnation is something I, I think about from time to time for sure. How would you want to come back? You know what? To be honest Have with you, you got to pick and choose like. Well, even before that, you know, I, I, I believe that I did something great in the past life. I, I believe that, uh, um, I believe I was a king, bro. I believe I was legitimately a king in the past life. I don't know if I was King David or who, who I was, <laughs> but I was a king in the past life because now I was dropped into a very limited society. I was dropped, even my, just my community, my culture back home, I was dropped into something that was very limited. And uh, I never, I never fit in. I, ne I never, I would never consider myself as fitting in with in any part of my childhood growing up. We, we say that now and I, and, I, and there's no, there's no shade. Like now, like I say, like, yo, we're from Ballin Park. Mm -hmm. But like I tell everybody that, that I'm able to coach and speak to, yo, you're bigger than your city. Right. No matter where you come from, no matter what part of the world, what, what state, what city, what area code, you're bigger than that. It's just time to outgrow it. That's right. Because if you try to stick there, you try to stick to that same environment, you're only going to grow so much, yeah. right? It's like, um, uh, there's, what was it, the, the shark, right? Like, if you put them in, an, in a habitat, like, it's only going to grow so much. But you put them out in the open, that motherfucker going to be eating everywhere and everywhere. Now he's going to be the biggest he ever could be. Right. And it's about outgrowing it. We're not just one, we're not just, we're LA based. This is where it, and I say we're LA based because this is where it grew. This is where we exploded. This is where we're daily, weekly, monthly growing. That's right. But we're for the world. No matter where we need to go, we'll go because that's where we need to be. Yep. 
There's great people out in small cities, like you said. There's great people out in big cities. Yep. But it's just a matter of time when our lanes and our paths will cross. Yep. When that time comes, we're going to be ready. Yep. Right? Like, I, I, I always say this. Like, when someone says, hey, I want to be on there, I'm ready for it. Maybe that's not the time, bro, because it depends on what you're posting. It depends on what you're doing, what you're portraying. Mm -hmm. You could be a highly motivated person in person, but you're portraying to the world how empty you are and how destructive you are. Mm. Why are you going to do that? Right. Why, why are you trying to, why are you putting destructive things out there? Yep. Right? No, let's, let's, let's be around people. Let's do things that are not hypocritical. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be around people that are highly motivated, <laughs> highly impactful, highly driven in their own area. So when these clips come out, they go back, they click on that. They're like, damn, I seen that. Yo, I heard you said this. Thank you so much for saying that. Oh. It's like, yo, it's coming from a place of, of in here, bro. I had to learn this. I wasn't this person, but because of the, the things that life took me through, I had to learn it for myself. Again, I, you can't tell me all these other things that you've never been through. I need to see it to believe it. And right. I, I need to see you that you went through it. If you didn't go through it, why are you telling me? Yep. It's, again, how we said about parents. Mijo, you need to follow your dreams. Bro, like, you never did it, though. Yep. Like, I'm sorry to tell you. Like, yeah. you never did it, but I got this. Right. I'm going to break that cycle, and I'm going to do it right now. That's right. No matter what the repercussions are, no matter what struggles and tribulations are going to be, I got to ride the journey. That right there, man. That that's, that's my purpose in life. That's my purpose in life. And I love how you said how I kind of talked about, like, where I came from was so limited. And you talked about, like, like yeah, but, you know, essentially we always got to show love for yeah. where we come from. And that's a, that's a great point because um, you guys ever heard the analogy of, like, training a flea instead of a jar? Yeah. No? You heard it? So, man, this is, I mean, it's an analogy, but it's actually real. So if I had a jar right here and if I put a flea into it, it's going to jump out. Right. And I keep putting it back in. It's going to keep jumping out. But let's say I put it in and then I cap it with the lid. It's going to hit the lid, come back down, hit yeah. the lid, come back down. But eventually the flea gets tired of hitting its head, of getting hurt. So now the flea jumps just below where the lid would be. This is the crazy part. You take the lid off. What happens? He doesn't jump out anymore. He still jumps just below where that lid would be. Yeah. And... He's adapted to being limited. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's adapted. This flea has, has now, I'm tired of failing. I'm, I'm, I've worked so hard, but I just, things aren't the way I want them to be. And yeah. I, 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 people tell me I'm not good enough. I'm like, I'm done. But now we're talking about environment. Let's say this, I'm kind of adding on to this analogy, but let's say the flea lays eggs. And what are the fleas going to see? Somebody jumping just below the lid. We're They're all exactly limited, right? Yeah. So what I'm passionate about is letting people know that you can jump as high as you want to jump in this life. You are limitless. There are no limits. The only limits are the fake ones that somebody created over your life. Yeah. And the one that you're believing in too. That's right. Again, teaching our youth. Yep. Teaching the 14 to 18-year-olds mm -hmm. that, hey, if you have the opportunity to go out and get out of here, go ahead. Okay. Um, pause real quick. That's 20. Our 18 year olds, 14, like the, what is it, 16, 16 to 18, right? And even after, that you, you can do a lot more than what everybody has once told you. Like, if you get an opportunity to go to college somewhere else, go try it, bro. Because these opportunities that you get right now, they may not come a second time. Right. Right? Like, we get opportunities that are once in a lifetime. That's what they call it, once in a lifetime. Mm hmm. You're not going to get it the second time. You'll be super lucky, I guess you could say, if you depend on luck, if you get it a second time. Sure. But it's like, yo, like, try it out. Bigger than this. I show love to Ballin Park, but our love didn't come from our inner city the first time. It came from surrounding areas. It came mm -hmm. from other states. So I'm always going to show love. Always. Because born and raised there. But we're bigger. Right. We're more purposeful. We're, we're meant for everybody, yep. not just for these people. Because, again, trying to speak a big dream to a small-minded person, they're going to call you crazy. That's right. They're mm -hmm. going to call you insane. No, yep. you, man, you really? Yep. 
when we started podcast, oh, podcast, dude. bro, what is this? Mm-hmm. Oh, what is that? Even my own parents, dude. Of course. Like, oh, mm-hmm. then like I, yeah. At the first couple months when like I started posting it two years ago, like ah, dang, you should have me on, dude. I'm good. And I was like, ah, uh-huh. the more we go, hey, dude, I see you've been doing it. How much money do you make? I'm like, mm. that's what you worry about. Mm. Oh, I want to do a podcast. How much money do you make? That's why you want to start a pot? Come on, bro. Nope. If you're doing it for money, you're going to be empty. Yep. If you're doing it without a purpose, you're going to fail. Yep. And you're going to want to quit. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is All right, let is. me ask you, little homeboy. Are okay. you happy? Am I happy? If you would have asked this person three months ago, I would have said, hell no. I would have said no. What changed about you in three months? I started doing my internal work and fighting my demons. Right? Like that sound that we seen, bro, and heard that I try to drown my demons, but they learn how to swim. I try to cover my demons, and they learn how to keep walking. I tried to put them away, and they kept coming. So what I had to do, I had to go to war. But it wasn't a war externally. It was a war inside, in my head, in my mind, in my body. So I had to, instead of trying to put those away, I had to face them. Now I'm friends with them. Cause I know what I gotta go through, and I know sometimes they're gonna they're gonna come here and there, like they're gonna test me. Mm-hmm. There's always in my days of temptation, they're gonna come and test me. They're gonna be out there. Hey, dude, today you're gonna be sad. Today you're gonna fight these suicidal thoughts. Nah, homie, kick the fuck back. I'm happy. I'm content. I'm I'm because I'm content because I always want more. Yeah. My my best and worst trait. I'm always gonna want more. Mm-hmm. But I'm happy. My kids are healthy. Their mother is healthy. My parents are healthy. My sister, my nieces, her hut, everybody's healthy. I got all of you guys. I'm happy with my life. There's nothing more that I need. If I lose this today, I have everybody around me that I need. And if I'm alone tomorrow for whatever reason, I'm still happy because I, I got to learn who I was when I was alone. I got to learn who I was when all the lights were off and all, and all the sounds were, all the voices were speaking too loud. I made friends with my demons. Because no matter when they come back, I know what I got to do in order to keep on going. And I got I to gotta show up. I stopped. I kept showing up for everybody else, but I started showing up for myself. And that's mm. the thing that mainly changed. I didn't want to show up for myself. Yep. I, was, I was happier putting everybody else in front and making them smile. That when I was home by myself, I was, I was sad. I was empty. But now, I, now I'm like, nah, bro. So what would be, like, the most important lesson you learned in these three months? If, it, if it's really what worked for me, it may, you know, again, it may not work for others, but what worked for me is I started praying. I started thinking. I started thanking God for everything he has gave me, the good and the bad, the hardships and the, lonely, the loneliness that he has. Without these moments that I've in my life, I would have never learned it. I would have never been able to speak on loneliness, on self-love, on being isolated. I had to, instead of complaining about why me, I had to thank him. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad it's me. Because now I get to put that shield on. Now I'm good. Now I can help other people. Because if, if I didn't go through that, how, how the hell can I speak on it? Mm-hmm. So instead of complaining to God about why is it happening to me, hey, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for this hardship that came to me. Now I need to figure out why it came. Now I need to understand why it came. You know, a lot of people don't want to do that. Nobody wants to understand the hardship, why they lost somebody, why that person left, why they broke your heart, why they do you dirty, why did you get fired from your job? It's like, yo, sometimes these bad moments were the blessings in your life. That because that happened, it grew you into becoming this because you had no other option. You, you lost everything. They took everything away from you. There's, you got nothing. You, you're empty. Nothing's there. Mm. Nothing. Everything inside your body is it's done for. You got, you're empty. You have nothing. Because of that, you started to rebuild. And you started to put things back inside you, in your heart, in your mind, of positive things. Well, hey, you know what? Today I am worth it. You know, today I am enough. A lot of people don't hear that a lot. Yep. I don't, what's the one thing everybody wants to hear? And it's one thing I, I heard it yesterday, and, and it's like, what's one thing you've always wanted to hear? Mm-hmm. What's one thing you need to hear right now? And for the longest time was that I'm enough. You do so much shit for others and for everybody, yet you still feel empty. Why is that? 
So I always wanted that gratification of, dude, you are enough. You're important. You're special. Yep. But and we, we need that because if we don't feel like we're enough, we're never – Nothing we do is ever going to be enough for people. We're, we're never going to make mm-hmm. everybody happy, right? Like, like w- this is cool that we're all here together because we all know what it's like to start a podcast and to blow it up, right? We all know what it is to, to know followers and blow it up. Yeah. But you're, you're, you're never, there's always going to be people, no matter what level you're at, that always have something to say. They're yeah. always oh, yeah. going to say, oh, you're, you're whacking this or, or something like that. So it don't matter if we, if, or when we get to millions of followers, there's always going to be people who are going to say you're not enough. So if you don't have that, you know, that self-love, that self-fulfillment with I'm enough, then it's it's never going to be enough. I'm going to tell myself these things so I don't need to hear from anybody else. Yep, exactly. Because when I look in the mirror, yo, you're enough. You're important. You're worth it. You're happy. You're the best ever. Mm -hmm. Talk your shit. You need to be confident. And some people take it as cockiness. No, it's my confidence and it's my self dialogue that I need it every day. Yep. I am enough. I am worthy. I am I am the best at what I do. I mean, it, hell yeah, it's cocky. I'd rather maybe someone's like that guy's so cocky. Either that or oh, that guy's so insecure. Which one do you want? Right? And I, I do that with my son. We uh me and my son, every morning we do words of affirmation in the mirror. And it it works, you guys. Like uh I help out at a school every day and that's the beauty of like what I do at the flexibility is is um I get to help out at a school and some kid will say something to to, to Marcus and he'll come up to me and be like, Dad, this kid said this to me and I was like, Well, what do you think? Well, that's that's not true. It's like, oh, okay, you're good then. He's like, Yeah. So, I mean, essentially, yeah, man, it's, it's like, it goes back to that quote, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. It don't matter what y'all say. It don't matter what y'all do to me. It really doesn't matter. You guys can try your best, but nah, you're, you're not, you're not getting you in here. What you say is, it ain't going to be It won't phase. Down. That's right. What is it? Sticks and stones break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Yep. And I mean, to even, you know, get on a deeper level, like when it comes to the trials and tribulations and things that you go through, you gotta, you gotta love those times. And, um, I consider myself broken. Like I'm a broken person. And a lot of people will be like, well, like that's horrible. It's like, no, because you can't break something that's already broken. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, call it putting the pieces back together, whatever you want to call it. But it's just like, man, I, I love it now. Like, like how you were saying, like, you know, you said something among the lines of like, you know, demons chasing you and now you're, you're, you're friends with them. Right. And, and for me, that's how I see hard times. And that's how I see pain. Like I'm, I'm crazy, man. I love pain. Like I, I love pain because think about it. What is what does pain do for somebody? Right, it, it helps them know what they need to improve on. It helps it, it, and they know they're getting better when it comes to working out, yeah. going through that pain. Um, when they go through a heartbreak and pain, your 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 heart is growing. Your your you know how to heal better the next time, yeah. and you're you're self developing. And so, but let's say you know I had there's this person, this friend in your life who's always there for you, who helps you develop who teaches you so many things, wouldn't you love this person? Yeah. Yes. So why don't you love pain? Because pain does the same thing. Pain's always there for you. If I stub my toe, pain's going to be right there, yeah. right? Pain helps me grow as a person. Um, so it's like I say, you guys, you change the way you look at things, man. The things you look at True. change, and your perspective is totally different. Shit, just, but, today is just <laughs> powerful, bro. And we always leave on quotes. We all, it's one thing that has gotten us to where we at because some of them go viral. Some of them don't, but the message is still there. Right. You know, it's just, it depends on the algorithm. Right? <laughs> yep. It always depends on the algorithm. But the message is, uh, has always stood strong, 10 toes down, and we believe in it 100%. Um, Dill, you got one today for us? Um, I got two. Woo! I got two. Damn. Let's go. Um, Save one for the next one, fool. I, I got plenty. <laughs> I got plenty, bro. Um, the first one is, and I think you touched on this a little bit, it would be... um. Blood makes you related, but loyalty makes you family. And then the second one would be if you want to be the best, you have to go through the worst. So, damn. Yeah. I love that. that would, then, love that. <laughs> is, there, is there one that, that you relate with that, that you uh, remind yourself every day of? Yeah. So I, I normally go with this uh, with a, one of my favorite quotes of all time, but I'm not going to go there this time. I'm going to go with uh, one for this quote will help you if you are continuously trying and persevering in something and you feel like giving up. And it is, if you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a haircut. I heard it from Denzel Washington. And so basically, 
you will catch a break. At, at one point, you will, but you just, you, you got to wait for that haircut because if you get out of line, you're going to have to start over yeah. or you may just not even try anymore at all. So you hang around that barbershop long enough. If you just, if you, if you hang around long enough, you're doing the right things, that's good, but just keep doing it. Just hang in there. Sometimes you don't know how things are going to turn out, but if, if you just hang in there, then uh, you're going to get that haircut. You're going to, you're going to catch a break. The one that has been sitting in my mind for, for the, night, the last couple, like two weeks, everybody, every time people get hurt, they always want to change, right? I love too hard. I'm too nice. I love too strong or too, I love everybody. I, but I always get hurt. I got to change who I am. Right. There's one thing that I heard the other day, and it just, it sits. Don't change who you are. Just change what you're good to. You're a loving person. You're a caring person. Keep being that light for other people. And if they're not appreciating who you are, just change who you're showing it to. Mm. And you will get appreciated and you will, you will get valued at that. So, that's wow. that's so, that. oh man. man i appreciate you for coming all this thank way you, bro man. thank Make, you taking a stop with us sitting down with us and and shedding light on a lot of topics and just your energy bro i love it i love you bro thank you so much for tapping in with us and yeah man i'm proud man, of you man bro this was a blessing man i i appreciate you i need y'all when you come to portland hop on my podcast man and, and we're going uh, i've been wanting to take him I've come been on wanting to let's take go him. Let's, let's go. go man. Yep. Just like podcast, most authentic, most organic, baby. Let's go. Woo!